Welcome to part three in our little Tenkara tuition video series. I'm John, this is Paul from Discover Tenkara. Um, in the last couple of videos, if you've not seen them, we've got a bit about how to sort of check out and test your rod for quality and manufacturing. Um, and there's a great free PDF that accompanies that. In the second one, if you've not seen that, there's a couple of great bits of on-stream tuition. So if you're watching this now and you've not caught up on the two before, head over to our blog at discover10carat.com you'll be able to find both of those get your hands on the free pdf get a great bit of on-stream tuition for this one um this part three and, and the last one we're going to be talking quite a bit uh in this video about our new rods uh the karasu the first sort of uh japanese manufactured rod from discover 10 Kara, and it's a bit of a special one you will get an opportunity to get your hands on one of these with a few special offers at the end of this video. But before that, we've got a bit of tuition on stream again. Um, so why don't we get right down to it? I suppose worth a little bit of a recap first, where, yeah, where we're sort of up to. I think so. And I mean, um, you'll have seen for the previous tuition, that was based on these big, uh, powerful, wide rivers. Mm. The next little lesson we're going to get on stream is going to go small and sort of close quarters my kind of rivers absolutely. <laughs> absolutely and um you know we've talked before about how we had that journey from competition style techniques and, and a lot of the stuff that you're doing with like the hopper dropper and duo tactics it's in that kind of close quarters mm. firing from the hip sort of um yeah. shoreline fishing T typically we're talking about river fishing in the sort of you know Euro nymphing and Euro comp style, where mm. a lot of the techniques are quite short lines. Not not really like short short lines, but length of the rod, twice the length of the rod. The the anglers tends to be in quite you're close fishing quarters. In, yeah, you're about five meters from your fish. Yeah, it's about time. stealth and precision. Yeah, absolutely. And this is the thing: we're going to come right down to this kind of close quarters, fast paced fishing. Mm. But we wanted to flag out that, that you know that there's such a range of conditions in Japanese streams that have given anglers opportunities to hone these techniques to an absolute razor's mm. edge, and with like somewhere around twenty thousand fishable streams yeah. in the Japanese islands, it, it gives you an amazing sort of schooling. And fishing is so popular there; the waters are often very, very um, heavily trafficked by anglers. Yeah. Anywhere with a road, anywhere near it. Yeah. will have seen a lot of traffic. So you've got you've got technically demanding conditions and you've got fish that have either seen an awful lot of flies or at very low density because yeah, of a lot of fish. They're going. not there because they've been eaten. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna need some of these these things. And this is one of the things that I think is simple, and it might seem completely obvious once you've heard about it, but it can be a game changer. There's there's power in that simplicity. Mm. And it's that idea of being able to get that fly first presentation and where possible, the fly only mm. presentation. The only thing splatting onto the water is your fly and not your casting line. We've, that can be a game changer. Absolutely. We've talked about this a lot. You know, it's, a, it's almost a mantra of ours, fly, fly first and fly only. Um, and it, we came to it with a lot of experimentation because... We are the kind of guys, as we've said in previous uh, in a couple of lessons ago on this, mm. if it's worth doing, it's worth overdoing. So when it came to fly first casting, we actually went on our syndicate streams, which they, they were fairly new to us at the time. We were just getting the syndicate set yep. up. And we were really getting into this concept of fly first cast and just what difference does it make to your fishing? So we decided to carry out some experiments where we fish together we took it in turns, we did different things on different pools and repeated experiments over several visits. And we were finding that it was the difference between landing casting line on the water as you fish and landing just the fly on the water as you fish. We saw a sevenfold increase approximately hmm. in the number of fish that we caught. Now you need to process that uh, for a second, <laughs> a sevenfold increase. This is the difference between seven fish mm. in a session which is a great day's fishing mm. to 49 fish in the same amount of time simply mm. by landing only the fly and not the casting line yeah it made such a huge difference we weren't fully I prepared mean, for that not that at all and i need difference. to clarify as well that when we're talking about landing the casting line on the water i'm talking about it kissing down and then you immediately correcting mm. 
to the same fishing position that yeah. you would achieve when you actually just splat the fly on the water. So it's not like you've got like 20 foot of line on the water and it's, it's that's the difference. It was literally avoiding that little second guess correction that you might have to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's interesting. Um, it was a few years ago when we did those experiments, but uh, just a couple of months ago, I was actually out on our syndicate streams with two guys and one of the guys had got a great fly first cast, um, just textbook, he'd, he'd, you know, he'd really practised. Uh, the other guy, he'd, he'd been fishing line on the water, mm. it, it was his style, the way he'd been fishing his 10 carry. And so getting the fly first cast was really, really difficult for him. If and you've got that muscle memory, it's difficult yeah, to overcome, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of these things. It, it, it was getting it by the end of the day, mm. but by the end of the day, you know, we'd nearly finished the day. Um, but what I noticed, we, we sort of totaled up when they'd been fishing. Uh, you know, I split them up and they had a bit of fishing each. And the guy that was landing his fly and his line, mm. it had six or seven fish, something like that, mm. you know, uh, half a dozen fish. The other guy had had 48 fish landing only the fly on, on the same sort of you know the same stretch of river only a few yards between yeah, at yeah, any yeah. time yeah and they're sort of the you know yeah. alternating so, where so in the water. Al almost almost perfectly replicating that seven to one ratio mm. it, it makes that much of a difference it, it is tremendous it is but here's the thing okay it's very i say very easy it's relatively straightforward to get a fly first cast when you can do a regular up and down mm. overhead cast you get that nice diagonal downwards angle yeah. of the cast so yeah. I like to say it's almost like rolling a bowling ball off, you know, off down a kind of a nice sort of track. It, it sort of the line just rolls off your rod yeah. tip and it goes down that chute right onto that sweet spot range mm. and it's fishing immediately as it mm -hmm. hits the water. Now then, if you're in cover, normally the last thing that you're able to do yes. is a straight up and down yeah. cast, right? <laughs> it's the only, you know, the main luxury that you you've immediately not got. So, what I suggest we do now is we take you on stream to a lesson show you one of the really good, simple, but super kind of ninja tricks to actually get um, a fly first presentation, but coping with overhanging uh, trees and obstacles and that kind of thing. So let's check that out right now. In this example, we can see that Paul's not entirely happy with his casting situation. We can take a closer look at that now. Overhead cover to the front means there's a likelihood of the forward cast snagging and behind we have several branches at several different heights and angles that are in danger of snagging on the back cast. Before we go any further it's worth taking note of Paul's little trick of keeping hold of the fly while making a short casting arc just to check he has a clear path for his cast. The real trick to this technique is to make a side cast right toward the last minute as the line's turning over you raise the rod tip to get the classic high rod fly first cast delivery let's see that one more time in slow motion and again at normal speed as we talked about in part one of this series rotational recovery of the rod is really important for casting like this with a good rotationally recovering rod, a little bit of practice at this casting technique, you should be able to put casts into difficult spots with fly first presentation at catch fish like this. So that was uh, kind of angling in the tricky bits. When, when you consider that we're using 12 foot plus of tenkara rod in these scenarios, um, it, can get, it can get a little bit unnerving at times. You're thinking, am I using a rod that's too long? But once you've got the right tool for the job, yeah. it, it, that you wouldn't dream of using anything else. It is deceptive on film as well, because it always looks like it's going to be easy. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever you can get a shot, it doesn't look tricky, but there's plenty yeah. of times between shots in the film itself yeah. where we actually put it in bushes yeah. because yeah. we either got it wrong or it pulled out of a fish or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, it, was, it, that was, uh, it wasn't just a cosmetic sort of 
indulgence. <laughs> a, a, lot of, a lot of clients, when, when I'm out guiding, they're very apologetic about being stuck in trees, and I'm sure there might be one or two of you guys watching. <laughs> but I always say, if it's not going in the trees, you're not trying hard enough, mm. you know. And if it's going in the trees every cast, then obviously yeah, you need yeah. some from, help. From time to time. Yeah, <laughs> but if the occasional hookup in trees, you know, it, probably it's in the right sort of ballpark. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, the, the sort of take home from that is, you know, the right tool for the job. If you've got a rod that's not got great rotational recovery, when you make these slightly circling casts or very exaggerated circling casts, or low rod rising up to a, that, a high yes, stop. Yes, yes, yes. Um, if it's not got great recovery on every plane, not just linear recovery, which we talked about in, I think, the first video. Very in first series, one, yeah. yeah. Um, if it's not got both good linear recovery and rotational recovery, when you make these swiping movements in different directions, the rod carries on moving. And it's like, if I did that trick on you, uh, I pass you the rod. You know, <laughs> and, and it, it is yeah. like someone playing a trick on you. <laughs> Every time it's going where it ought to, you, you see the fly sailing to that one spot where you know there's a fish. Mm. And you make your cast, and the fly's going there, and then it goes, whoop, and the rod pulls it offline. It's like having the rug pulled out from under your beautiful cast. Mm. And the, the rod did that, or more, more accurately, the recovery problems on the rod did that. They actually sabotage great technique. Yeah. And there are ways, with, with good technique, you can be better than with bad technique. But there are still elements of some rods that can actually sabotage that. Puts a glass technique. ceiling on it, no matter how yeah. good your technique is. Yeah, yeah. So when it comes to what is the right tool for the job, we really set ourselves a, a very serious task. And we've been involved in sort of rod design and manufacture for a few years now. We we initially stayed well clear of rods. We could have easily had our own branded rods very, very quickly when we started Discover Ten Carry years ago. Mm. Uh, you know, we were around um quite early on in the sort of tenkara craze or the fad as it was called <laughs> well, then. in the west yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah um but we deliberately steered clear of rods because we we wanted to kind of do a proper apprenticeship we were consciously incompetent once we realized what the richness of technique was there we mm. knew we had more homework to do before yeah. we'd take a stand and yeah. say it so and is this is a good point and this is the part where we're actually going to explain how what we've produced with the Japanese made rod actually meets the demands of the techniques that we've given mm. you. So we've shown you why you might want to use number three nylon. We've shown you why you might want to cast a heavy long line with a big kibari mm. and boom it out across a big river. We've shown you why holding together and having that nice recovery on side casting in tight conditions is a good thing. The difficulty is there are some absolutely fantastic Tenkara rods out there. And in Japan, there's some pretty expensive ones as well. Mm -hmm. It's interesting that, I mean, Go sort of brought up the point that um, Tinkara in the West, we got the uh, sort of more entry-level, cheaper copies of rods yeah. before we got the... Normally, see the way, if you think yeah. about fast cars and things like that, you know, imported cars... Any, 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 any pastime, any new technology, mm. anything that, that, that kind of... Uh, migrates to another culture or, or or is just you know introduced to the world tenkara really had it ass backwards <laughs> that there's no there's no easy way to say <laughs> I think it. that's about right but yeah. basically when it when it's technology you get the cutting edge first like mm. when computers first came out you know having something with the computing power that we take for granted now took up a whole room mm. cost millions and was only the property of serious scientific institutes and it, it did happen almost in reverse like that. But yeah. this is a good thing because it's brought so many people into... And it's absolutely vital that people have got, yeah. you know, entry-level affordable equipment. You know, it's it's, it's you know it's essential for yeah. the whole uh, Tinkara yeah. community. So it's a good thing. However, you know, when you're looking at some of the top-end Japanese rods that are designed for very specific purposes, you've got that extra element of support to take away that glass ceiling for your experience now if if that's what you're up for you're really serious and kind of committed 10 carat angler that's the kind of thing that is going to add to your time on stream and nothing is more precious than that time on stream if you're if you're an angler so you know let's think about some of those those elite rods that we've got and we're going right back to those compromises that we talked about in the first um sort of tuition video with let's say some of the gamma katsu rods absolutely superb big fish um, very powerful, wonderful rods, 
great for casting a big taper line. Yes. A lot of the guys we've met, they either use quite beefy, mm. tapered horse hair that yes. they've filled themselves, or uh, actually hand-filled nylons, filled in the same way mm. you would mm. fill a horse hair line. And they've, they've got that, you know, that, that power, but they've got that commanding hook mm. set. Mm. Um, and the, the, the genuine deep down power to subdue yeah. some of these big sort of migratory salmonids and sometimes invasive brown trout as yeah, well. Yeah. Got, there was a recent capture yeah. from Kobayashi San. Um, yeah, Kobayashi San's <laughs> big brown trout was a phenomenal capture. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let's, that, on that, the flip that's side. not a cheap rod either. No. Uh, that's something like $550 for, for the Gamakatsu rods. Around that and, sort of ballpark. And, yeah, one guy, a, pro a professional. Uh, Shikuryoshi, mm. mountain mm -hmm. sort of dwelling commercial angler and bear hunter that we interviewed, y Yamada san. Yes. Uh, tremendous guy. He owned one of these rods, but then he, and the $550 rod, then he revealed that he'd bought like another four or five. Yeah, he's just got them because he likes that, yeah. For yeah. spares, basically. Yeah, in big, case so he making it. Yeah, so that he would never be without one for the rest of his life. What a great lesson for him. Yeah. <laughs> but going right to the other end of the scale, you know, you've got elite rods like you know tenryu uh, for mm. eyeball you know um if you if you're not familiar with the name you may be familiar from pictures because yeah, you, yeah. you can't miss them in pictures <laughs> they're a, a real sort of vivid scarlet blank or almost like it, like, like they lit up yeah it's like a glossy sort of fire yeah. engine red sort of yeah, a, a thing yeah. going on. but again um elite light line casting tremendous so, delicate action yeah yeah, um, yeah so soft and delicate that some people just don't find them comfortable to use they they feel a little strange but it's going people. yeah it's going back to that thing of the, the casting the number three nylon mm. is not easy to do yeah if you've got the skills to do it yeah. you know that's a wonderful rod to do it so long story short what we were fortunate to be able to achieve and let's not try and take too much credit here because we've relied massively on a collaborative effort of all the input of really top um, Japanese anglers mm. and the manufacturers you know they yeah. bring a massive amount of experience so when we're talking about these rods now you know it's a, it's a huge collaborative effort mm. but what we've tried to do and I think we've kind of got there we've shown you the benefits of that rotation recovery these rods superb on that mm. so it's going to give you that control in tight situations but the real magic trick and the thing that we're just so pleased about is that you can cast as you've seen on the video you can cast number three nylon i was using a six meter line in the lesson mm. and meter and a half of tippet something like that and works beautifully yeah normally when that happens you lose a degree of the hook setting power yeah and you'll you've got I've, i own some wonderful rods that i love fishing with that give you that nylon casting ability, but you probably land about half the fish that you hook, particularly with hardmouth species like amago, yamame, brown trout. Yeah. Um, that hook point can just bounce out and you can have a few sort of twists and thrashes and then, and it, then it comes the off. off. And another thing, you, you can end up in a scenario, whether it's a modest size fish in very fast flows or a big fish in, in any flow, Mm. you end up with the feeling that the fish is playing you you know you get these <laughs> this tremendous casting and presentation so you're managing to get to some you know spooky wary big experienced mm -hmm. fish and the minute you hook them it's kind of like you, you're only playing it with a four foot rod because the rest of the rod's pointing straight at the fish because mm. they're just you, you don't want a really stiff rod but because they are so delicate aimed at casting in very light lines there's just not that extra little bit of reserve. For, you want, to, for you want it to fish. retain a bit of length so you can actually steer the fish. Yeah, and yeah, I think that's the thing. Yeah. But the, the interesting thing for me, and it's completely accidental, I'm not going to pretend, oh yeah, we definitely intended this. Yeah. <laughs> but by designing in that uh, light line casting with the hook set power, We've actually managed to prove, you know, it's so ironic because we were trying to do this light line, weightless fly sort mm. of method. Mm. We've actually produced something that's <laughs> pretty damn good uh, beadhead uh, nymph fishing yeah, rod as well. Yeah, because you've got the sensitivity mm. and the delicacy, um, let's not forget that that sensitivity of touch. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later about the choice of EVA. But the, the blank construction and the EVA, you actually feel more through the rod and some of that's to do with the delicacy at the tip as well. Yeah. But when you're nymphing, you, you can feel what's going on as well as have the reserve of power it takes to 
custom manager nymph and yeah. set a hook at, at depth. Well, let's him. let's maybe have um, Neil's quote on stream when he's talking about he felt the diff. I can't remember the exact words, but he's talking about feeling gravel and feeling a fish's mouth through the, yeah, the rod. Yeah, let, let's run that now. Can just sort of have a look at that. Fascinating bit of watching. <laughs> uh, I love the the feeling that the 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 360 has, which is a sort of I'm going to say more elegant, not something I'm very uh, used to really elegant but anyway it has a really 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 lovely feel and yet even if you put a, a big sarcassa on it can take it quite happily so it's not flopping about um, it, uh, yesterday we were um, under trees and under bushes with a tapered nylon line and it was just taking it underneath it was just awesome so then um, we tried the 400 and the 400 was I didn't go say it's not powerful it's not brutish but it's different again, uh, and you know, I mean, we pulled up, I don't know, it was only a pound and a half fish, but a pound and a half fish from deep down in a really, uh, where, uh, sort of a maelstrom type area, really, it was really pulling hard, the rod had no problem, peeing out it came, so it was marvellous. Light lines were also not a problem on either rod, actually, and I could really feel, uh, we have, there was gravel, uh, sort of granite gravel on the river base, and I could really feel when, I, when, the, when the hook had touched it, and I could feel it going across that, and yet when a fish took it, I could really tell the difference. And that was for the, the both the 360 and the 400, actually. Uh, it's great to hear things like that. You know, when you've put your, your soul into uh, something. Tell me about it. To hear, to hear someone, almost like you've written them a script, to say the things that you aimed to, aim to hit. Yeah. Um, it, is, it is wonderful to hear. And... One of the things that Neil picked up on, as well as that sensitivity, was the way that the rod feels balanced, uh, you know, almost like it's part of you. Mm. And we had a bit of a run-in uh, as we started to launch this online with one of our, let's call him a competitor, who uh, was kind of making a joke out of the weight of the rod. It was mm. sort of only 30 or 40 grams heavier than, than uh, you know, what, what he thought would be a great weight. Um, but... I would argue till my dying day, this, this, the weight on the scales within those 20 or 30 grams does not matter. Um, it's, you know, it's much, much more important that the rod balance as well in the hand. And um, I actually did a test with, with a client of mine where I got our rod and the competitor's rod, both 12 foot mm. side by side. This rod is heavier. I let him feel both. I said, you, you give those a little swing and see what you think, which is heavier. He thought the competitors was heavier and this was lighter because mm -hmm. it balances it feels less fatiguing it's perceived weight and yeah. and it's what we've deliberately done that's why we've put that yeah. denser yeah. longer handle as well as the kind of ability to move your hand around on the grip and do that sort of passive zoom yeah essentially you've got almost a foot of zoom by yeah. changing grip position but as well as that you've got the density which gives you that counterbalance which mm. you don't have with a reel and we're going to be completely up front that is why we've put more weight at the back end of the rod yeah. because it feels lighter it, it feels lighter it feels better Another, it changes the action of the blank. Mm, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> um, another bonus is that that extra density. You feel more through the rod, as, as Neil was saying. You could feel the bottom. You will you will feel takes before you see any indication, and sometimes you'll feel takes that never really showed any you'll indication. You'll get more feedback during the cast. Yeah, with light yeah. lines, that's abs. You've got to modify consciously or subconsciously mm. how you react to what the, yeah. the rod's doing, yeah. loading, unloading. This for me. Uh, it surprises so many people who, like us, grew up on foam handled rods mm. in the seven, 1970s and 1980s. Yeah. Yeah. This is a different yeah. beast it, yeah. altogether. This yeah. the de high density um, EVA. Yeah, uh, it's 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 the future in in my eyes. It feels once, harder than yeah. cork to me. Once you've fished with one, um, it's amazing the, the amount of people. I mean, this is not the first rod with an EVA handle. We've no, worked, no, no, worked no, absolutely. On. And uh, many, many people that I've had as guiding clients and that I've fished with, um, you get this sort of look of disdain. Oh, I'm not sure about that. I'd much prefer cork. Give them an hour's fishing and the, there's almost this universal reaction. Oh, I love this handle. I wish I could get this handle on a nymphing rod. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of our guiding clients, a ridiculously high proportion of guiding clients who, when they've tried the rod, they've actually pre-ordered. Yeah. And I think, I don't, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think about half of those people who bought one of them have actually decided to take both rods yeah. as well. Yeah. Now, that's the, we can't convey that over the video, but it, it is you know fascinating nonetheless that people who actually get to try these rods mm. 
you know, they do, they think, yeah, you know, why wouldn't you? Um, yeah. It just yeah. gives you that, you know, that elevation yeah. and experience. We didn't set out to make you your first 10 car rod. Mm. Um, that, you know, with, with this project, moving manufacturing to Japan, nobody does that to save money. Mm. Nobody does that to, to, you know, make a, make a good margin. It, These, when they come out of the factory, actually cost us, each rod costs us more than a lot of um, rods actually cost at retail price. Mm. It, so that, yeah. that it it's not an artificial elevation of the price. It's, it is yeah. the price of that quality, basically. The whole aim of the project was to produce the best rod we could. We didn't set out to, to make your first rod. We mm. set out to make your best rod and our best rod. Mm. And we feel like we've achieved it. It's got the properties that we were looking for. Where you would have to switch rods, if you want good hookup and good fish playing ability, mm. you would need one rod. But you would have to sacrifice casting the light lines and enjoying the, the feedback and the sensitivity. When you get that feedback and sensitivity in a light line rod with a delicate action, you lose the hooking power, especially if you're fishing for big or hard mouth fish mm. uh, or fishing longer ranges. And talking about the price itself, it is comparable to good quality fly rods that are actually a lot shorter you actually get a lot more rod yeah for yeah. your money and yeah. and i would argue as well that the level to be able to load with the the, the lightness of the casting lines mm. you know if you asked a fly rod to do that you'd be paying a lot more than what yeah. we're actually asking yeah. for, for these at retail yeah. and again we had a, a, another fantastic uh, quote actually one of your clients um who who just unbidden actually emailed me after one of the email lessons that he'd, he'd uh, been enjoying and he just gave us and i think we should probably put it up on screen just mm. to sort of write it out but um essentially you're saying that to get a comparable amount of performance even without the full elegance of tenkara the amount he was happy to spend to have the experience on western fly fishing gear was a lot more than actually one what one of those would you know would actually Cost yeah, to do that, yeah, yeah. and and it is that um, I left it your <laughs> quote before about it's cheaper than what was it? I can't remember the. Uh, you'd said I'd said about it being about the same as like a couple of tubs of like expensive ice cream on your weekly shop. You, yeah, if you have that, you pretty quickly pay for one of those. It's that order. Yeah. Oh something. yeah, a cu couple of tubs of Ben and Jerry's a week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah I, well, I said it's cheaper than smoking. <laughs> Only one of these rods is cheaper than smoking. So so if you smoke, you can pack up and buy one tomorrow. Um, but really, part of it, part of it for me is that we've got used to the yeah. uh, original it, price it, of Tenkara. It Tenkara's. goes back to what, what uh, Go, Go hit the nail on the head when he talked about how Tenkara had come to the West ass backwards, literally. Mm. Um, we had the, the entry level stuff first, the, the Chinese manufactured sort of mass produced. The important, yeah. vital bottom end, you know, that Rod, Rod's bringing people benefit in. benefit on sort of the, the technology of those who had gone before. Hmm. Whereas in most no, most new things, you have the high-end stuff first and it gradually trickles down. But that happened in Japan 20 or 30 years ago. Hmm. We're now just seeing projects like this, Rod, and let's give him his due. Chris Stewart partnered up with a Japanese company to, to bring an already existing rod yeah, yeah, yeah. in uh, with his Tenkarabon brand, and that's a great rod also. Mm. But these rods are creeping up to those high-end prices, the cutting edge where you get in top-quality Japanese manufacturing, top-quality materials, and top-quality design, where there's really, the, the higher you go, the fewer compromises there are. Yeah, and it is choosing those trade-offs, so they sit in very distinct mm. niches. So yeah. there's not one perfect Tenkara rod, yeah. but there is a perfect tool for yeah. a particular... We, we said, for us, really, we went in with the project with... The cost is not not an objective to mm. look at. The cost will be what the cost will be. We want a rod that will cast light line and have good hookup and fish playing power, which we've never seen in a Tenkara rod ever before. Mm. You could argue as much as you like, oh, my Tenkara rod does this, my Tenkara rod does that. There isn't a rod out there that does, anywhere exactly that. that does what this does. The light line and the fish hookups is phenomenal and the extra sensitivity. To get that, you need that attention to detail from the manufacturer. Mm. Don't suddenly start skimping on the quality of components, which yeah. we, we have experience with Chinese manufacturing. Japanese manufacturing is a whole different game. Mm. Completely uncompromising, every little step of the process has got that attention to detail beyond mm. belief so 
what is karasu, the karasu? Um, in Japanese, karasu means crow. Um, and we chose the name, if you've not guessed by now, because of the beautiful, elegant black design <laughs> with the natural carbon, beautiful sort of uh, grey and black tones of the crow. Mm. Um, it's got that sort of almost like bad boy reputation. They're really smart, intelligent birds and they tend yeah. to kind of like, you know, polarise opinion. And, yeah. you know, yeah. I think that... I think that... we've managed that with this one, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's... Available in two lengths, 360 centimetres, 3.6 metres, or approximately 12 feet, mm. and 400 centimetres, uh, that's just over 13 feet. Mm. Uh, yeah, 4 metres. seven something like that, is it? I'm not sure. Uh, maybe we could put it up on screen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or you could Google it. <laughs> <laughs> so, 360 or 400. In terms of what they're suited for, they're, they're both great for a wide range of circumstances but obviously the four meters better suited to open canopy streams or or bigger rivers the 360 is great in close quarters um we've sort of shown them in the sweet spot yeah, things yeah, the intended yeah. usage the extra reach with the nylon line across current mm. is fantastic mm. for the four meters where your tree canopy constricts yeah. that 360 is better for that they do have a slight different feel that feels like there's more kind of uh business in the 400 the 360 feels sharper and a, a lot of feedback we've had you know this the 400 it doesn't feel heavy in the hand mm. but it feels like it could control a decent fish yeah with all that sensitivity mm. so the two lengths before we get any further it's probably worth flagging this up right now we've said it before and we can say it again we didn't set out to make you your first 10 carry rod we set out to make you your best 10 carry rod the Karasu really is for serious and committed Tenkara enthusiasts. Yeah, and if you're the sort of angler that maybe does Tenkara from time to time, this probably isn't the rod for you. And if you were that kind of casual Tenkara angler, it would make sense to ask about a refund policy. And the simple truth is that for the Karasu, we're not offering one just because the only reason we feel you'd want to return it is if you didn't use it. Yeah, if you're not going to use it, please don't order. It's as simple as that. They're in limited numbers. Uh, they're quite expensive to produce. We want to make sure these rods get to the people that really want one. So if you're not too sure, just don't order. It really is a very serious rod for a very serious angler. We've got a full range of spares and the backups that can supply any needs for breakages and replacement parts, so you don't need to worry about that. But the bottom line is, don't order if you don't intend to use it. In addition to the rods, we wanted to do something a bit special for the launch of the Karasu. Uh, those of you who fished Tenkara for a while, you cannot help but know what one of these is. Uh, the blue line winders are almost ubiquitous in Tenkara. And in I think I speak for you as well, in our opinion, this design has never been bettered. We've seen a few gimmicky things out there, you know, an attempt at redesigning the wheel, but really for us, it doesn't get much better than this. Mm. The problem is, is it doesn't quite have the crow <laughs> appeal. So we went to the trouble of having uh, about 400 of these made. Mm. Uh, beautiful matching Karasu black line winders. And if you get one of these rods right now during the offer period, we'll chuck you one of those in with a bit of a line to go with it. One well, of this, our favourite lines. This is the thing. This is sort of the time to you know get on the bus now or you know, never sort of thing because up until the 11th of August 2017, there's going to be a special pre-launch promotion because the first batch of rods are actually being made right now. Um, so to book yours and to encourage you to do that, to make sure you get the absolute best out of it, we wanted to layer some special bonuses on top of it yeah. to just sort of help you along with that and to give you yeah. the best experience as possible. There's going to be a substantial discount off the price of each rod as well up yeah. until the end of this pre-launch period. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a spool that can matching spool, a Karasu sort of styled spool that goes with each rod. With that, you'll get a, a line that matches perfectly with the model that you choose so that it's already balanced right out of the packet. Yep. You can pick it up and use it straight away. On top of that, we're going to go to the trouble of tying, personally, these are not going to be sort of factory produced ones, we're going to tie uh, some Karasu, some crow feathered bodied flies. Um, these sort of stiff hackle kibari, we have a huge amount of success mm. on them. 
They're absolutely fantastic. They're brilliant for stretching out those long lines and anchoring in currents and for manipulations and yeah. sending out vibrations and everything. And it's got the little nice little tie in that the, the, the body feather is actually taken yeah. from a crow. So yeah. you've got a, literally a karasu kibari. So you karasu kibari, your spool, your line, and your rod, that all comes together. Um, Let's not forget the entire back catalogue of I media. was just, I'm glad you got in there. I was going to remind you, but yes, that's, that's where we're at. Um, mm. We, again, for everyone that supports us with the launch of this rod, we want to make sure that you get the best experience with this rod possible. And the best way we can do that is give you access to our entire back catalogue, everything up to the end of season one of 10 Carat in Focus. So that's all the download content, uh, both PDFs and tuition videos. And the bonuses. Uh, and the bonuses that go with them. All of our uh, downloads of our DVDs, our Kibari ebook, about 418 page ebook on, mm -hmm. on Kibari. Um, there's a massive, massive, massive library. We totaled it up the other day. It was over two hundred and eighty dollars worth. Yeah, of I downloads. think two hundred and eighty six dollars would get you everything in our yeah. back catalogue. Yeah. So we're giving you that for free with yeah. every rod that uh, you purchase. Yeah. So if if you if you already own uh, quite a few bits, you can complete the entire collection. Mm. If you've never come across us before, you're in for a hell of a bonus. <laughs> It'll probably take you till the end of the fishing season to watch it all. <laughs> to download um, it all. <laughs> if you are one of those guys out there and you've bought absolutely everything we do, then if you take advantage of this offer and you get in touch with us, we'll sort you out with some discounts on future products on the downloads for Series 2 of 10 Carat and Focus. And they'll be and proper They're, proper they're, they're going to be great. Yeah, so you'll, yeah, you'll yeah. get plenty of free stuff in the future series if you own absolutely everything. And we can check. We have, <laughs> we have a database. <laughs> so here's the offer in full. We've got the Karasu 360 or 400 rod. We've got the Karasu black line holder with matching line. Then we're gonna give you a Karasu Crow Feather Kibari tied by myself or Paul. And on top of that, there's our massive back catalogue of downloadable content worth $286. That's a combined total of up to $796. But if you take advantage of our offer, you'll get the Karasu 360 bundle for $420 or £325. And you'll get the 400 for four hundred and fifty dollars or three hundred and fifty pounds. What we really want you to do right now is if you want to get in on this and nail down all those bonuses and the discounts and just the availability because these rods take a while to actually mm. make. So once this batch is actually sold out, it's going to take several months to make the next batch. So yeah. there is a kind of a time pressure on that. We want you to get in on that right away. So if you are in the USA. Uh, you need to go over to Chris Stewart's site at tinkarabum.com. He has a page, Karasu sales page. We'll put the links all around this video so you can't miss it. Go ahead, go through to there, make your pre-order, and then get in there before the 11th of August. For anybody outside the USA, uh, you can come to our site, discovertinkara.com, and we've got discovertinkara.com forward slash karasu will take you to the rod mm. it'll give you some of the backstory of where the name came from some of the mythology behind it and that kind of thing and you can click straight through to the order uh, page yeah. pay by paypal uh, use your card to do that uh, go ahead get in on it get the discount and then just get out on stream with us and start enjoying uh, the experience of fishing karasu tenkara <laughs>